Hello and welcome to this session. So in today's session we're going to be talking about uh, network components and these are the devices that make up our networks or the internet at large. And uh, we're going to basically understand how each device uh, plays its role in the network or the internet at large. So if into this kind of content remember to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel uh, comment down below let me know what topics you'd like me to talk about and uh, also let me know what you think about uh, these videos that i'm doing so let's get into network components so we are going to start with the hub and the hub basically connects uh, devices in a network together or in an internal network that is a, a local area network it has multiple ethernet ports that uh, make connections to these devices and it is considered to be dumb. That is, uh, it does not filter any data or uh, it does not have any intelligence as to where the data is supposed to be sent. Now, a hub only knows when a device is connected to its port. And if that device sends traffic through one of these ports, then the traffic is broadcasted or uh, copied to all the other ports that are in the hub this creates a security concern and, and uh, also unnecessary traffic which wastes a lot of bandwidth. Now to overcome the problem we a switch was introduced and uh, a switch is similar to a hub that is uh, it connects uh, devices in a network together or an internal uh, network which is a local area network. It has uh, multiple other ports and uh, these ports make uh, connections to devices. Now, unlike a hub, a switch is intelligent uh, such that it can learn the physical devices that are connected to it and store the physical addresses uh, associated to these devices uh, in a table that we call the MAC address table or the media access control table. Now, this allows packets to only be sent to the intended destination port uh, once received. So. Uh, you can basically see the difference between a, a switch and a hub and this uh, basically reduces unnecessary traffic on the network and uh, also reduces uh, security concerns since you're not sending uh, traffic to unwanted uh, destinations. Now there is what we call a router and the, a router uh, is there to facilitate exchange of packets outside the local area network and uh, it does this by reading uh, the IP addresses that are uh, associated with the devices that are sending traffic. It uh, looks at the source uh, the IP address and the destination IP address and uh, based on this uh, information it routes or forwards traffic from one network to another. Okay, And when a packet rec is received the data's IP address is determined and if the packet was meant for its own network then it's going to take that uh, traffic or packet. If it is not meant for that network then uh, it's going to forward it to the relevant uh, router and this basically makes a router the gateway to a network. That is if I want to communicate from one network to another then I have to go through a router. And uh, we are going to be talking about these uh, routing concepts in another video and how we determine the routes that are taken by a router and how we can uh, assign them. Now, we have to remember that hubs and switches are used to create networks while well, uh, routers connect to these networks as we have just talked. Now, there is what we call a firewall and a firewall is basically a system that is divided designed to prevent unauthorized access from entering the private network by filtering information that comes from the internet. It blocks unwanted traffic and uh, permits wanted traffic. This creates a safety barrier between a, a private network and the public internet because the public internet is always going to have hackers and malicious traffic that would cause harm to our networks. It is important to use a firewall for home and especially enterprise environments. And how a firewall basically works is by filtering incoming traffic 
uh, and determines by its rules which are determined or customized, customized by the network administrator whether a uh, that traffic is allowed to enter the network or not as we have just said these rules are uh, customized or determined by the network administrator and these rules are called access control lists the access control lists uh, rules either allow or deny permission for traffic to enter or uh, get into our networks and firewall firewall uh, rules can be based on ip addresses domain names protocols ports and the uh, keywords now down below here is uh, an example of an access control list where we are denying traffic to one machine which is 10.1.1.22 and uh, we are denying that traffic on port 80 so basically this device the that device which is 10.1.1.22 cannot access a uh, web uh, services when it comes to this access control list but the other two devices that is 192.168.2.50 is allowed to access that as uh, we can see on the access control list and the uh, 172.16.1.13 is also allowed so this is the basic uh, structure of an access control list and uh, it's what you're going to find when uh, you log into your firewall and uh, you want to configure what devices uh, will uh, get into your network now there are types of firewalls and uh, these firewalls are separated whether by the, the, the gap whether it's a host based or a network based a host based uh, firewall is a software that is installed on a computer and protects that computer or device only now a network based firewall is a combination of hardware and software placed between the private network and public network and uh, protects the entire network and uh, these uh, network based firewalls can be standalone products uh, mainly used by large organizations and can also be built in as a component of a router and these are mainly used by small organizations and can be de also be deployed uh, as in a service provider cloud infrastructure that is if you have your infrastructure or your networking infrastructure on the cloud then you can deploy virtual firewalls as we talked in our virtualization video now this is what we call an IDS or an intrusion detection system and this is basically a device or software that monitors a network for or system for malicious traffic or policy violations now there is something I would like you to understand about uh, this uh, IDS because we are going to cover another uh, product or device that is called an intrusion prevention system and uh, the difference between these two is basically uh, an intrusion detection system will only receive that traffic it will receive that traffic just like any other client or host in the network and based on what a uh, signatures or what uh, stati statistical data that it has it's going to uh, uh, notify you of malicious traffic that is trying to enter your network or has already entered to your network and it's going to tell you that uh, you have received a certain packet and uh, this packet is malicious so uh, that is an IDS and it's basically placed inside the network where you have uh, your switch just like any other device it's going to monitor the traffic uh, receive copies of each uh, packet sent to each client uh, in the network and if there is malicious traffic then it's going to notify you and tell you that uh, certain packets were received and these packets were malicious now there are two types of uh, intrusion detection system we have talked about signature based and this uh, basically works like uh, the antivirus where you have a record of previous uh, packets that were analyzed and uh, classified to be malicious and if a net a component or a host in your device receives this traffic then it's going to use the records that uh, it has and based on a certain signature that uh, the malicious 
the malicious traffic was assigned, it's going to notify you and tell you that uh, this uh, packet is malicious and uh, it's based on this signature that uh, was discovered earlier by other researchers and uh, it's going to notify you to take action on the same. Now, there is what we call a, a, st a statistical anomaly based detection. And this is uh, basically uh, when you analyze the packets that you receive in your network, the result it is used to receiving. If your network is uh, receiving, a, let's say, a 500 packets per second, and you receive a 600 packets or a 700 packets per second, then you, this is uh, abnormal, okay? And uh, based on uh, the statistics that uh, the intrusion detection system has of receiving 500 packets per second, it's going to uh, tell you that this uh, kind of traffic it's uh, it's abnormal, okay? So it's going to notify you, and uh, it's going to trigger you to take action on uh, looking at uh, what packets are being received in your network. Now, there is what we call an intrusion prevention system, and as we have talked earlier. An intrusion prevention system is a device that, or software application that monitors uh, network systems for malicious activity or uh, policy violations. And while an intrusion detection system monitors the network and send alerts to the network administration about uh, potential threats, an intrusion prevention system takes more substantial action to control the access to the network. And uh, uh, an IPS uh, basically uh, is placed where you would have your firewall and uh, this is between the router and the firewall and uh, now an, I, uh, an intrusion prevention system is supposed to prevent that traffic from, from even entering your, your network. Remember that an IDS just takes copies of whatever packets have been sent to your clients in the network but an IPS, an intrusion prevention system, stops that traffic even before it's received by the clients or hosts in uh, your network. And this basically prevents attacks from uh, developing inside your local area network. So I believe I'm clear on the two, that is an IPS and an IDS. And then the next uh, thing we're going to look at is the DMZ or the demilitarized zone. Now. Uh, in between countries, uh, there is usually a no man's land, okay, and this no man's land is uh, supposed to just add an extra layer of security, such that if malicious uh, uh, people get into your country, then they are first going to get into this uh, demilitarized zone before they get to your country or to your country border. And this is basically the same with uh, this demilitarized zone when it comes to networks. It enables host and systems stored within uh, within it to be accessible from untrusted external networks. So if an untrusted uh, host or client comes into your network, they are first going to get into the demilitarized zone. And uh, it uh, does this by keeping uh, other hosts and uh, systems on private networks isolated. So you basically separate uh, your internal traffic, uh, your internal traffic, and uh, uh, public traffic from the internet. And the DMZ is not usually safe. It uh, just provides an extra layer of security to an internal network. It restricts access to sensitive data resources and servers by placing a buffer between external users and uh, a private network. Other benefits could uh, could uh, include access control, preventing uh, attackers from carrying out uh, reconnaissance of uh, potential targets in your system, and uh, protecting organizations from being attacked through IP spoofing. And IP spoofing is where uh, you fake your IP address to look like one of the IP addresses that are in the network. And uh, we have what we call a, a proxy server and a proxy server basically retrieves data on the internet on behalf of a user it sits as a midman in between the co client computer on the network that is it receives requests from the client computer and retrieves data on behalf of the client 
and responds to the client computer. So our proxy server has uh, several benefits. It uh, allows for privacy uh, when one is surfing the internet, since you are going to be using the proxy server's IP address. It uh, increases speed by caching retrieved data so that when as the same request is made from another computer on the network, it will just receive it and uh, retrieve the cached data from the cache database, thus reducing the turnaround time, that is the time that it takes for a request to go out into the public internet and uh, send back a, a response to the client in the network. And uh, by caching data, it is basically uh, saves bandwidth and uh, reduces the need to go out on the internet since you already have that data stored in the cache uh, of the proxy server. Now another uh, benefit of a proxy server is activity logging is uh, whereby you can uh, view what users are uh, using or uh, what users in your network are doing in the network or what they are searching for in the network. It's going to basically keep a log of all the events that uh, uh, are happening and uh, all the requests that were made and all the responses that uh, were returned back to the clients or hosts in a network. Now, a proxy server cannot uh, encrypt data and uh, thus data can be intercepted by hackers, ISPs and governments with the proper equipment and uh, thus a uh, uh, a VPN is uh, important. Now, a VPN uh, is uh, basically a connection uh, created between a, a remote uh, user and the server that they are accessing or the uh, network infrastructure that they are accessing. And basically, a VPN encrypts data by being transmitted. Uh, it encrypts data that is being transmitted uh, over the internet. That is, even when uh, intercepted, one would not make sense of the data since it's not uh, in clear text. It provides a dedicated uh, secure tunnel between, between two points over the internet, as we have just talked uh, earlier. And uh, no logging is involved when it comes to a uh, VPN. So uh, no records are kept of what uh, data is going through a virtual private network. Now, I believe that's it when it comes to network components and uh, thank you for joining me in this video uh, see you in the next one and uh, peace